If you're unfamiliar, this is Kent Hovind on screen here. He likes to make all kinds of crazy, unhinged, ridiculous claims about the young earth creationist conspiracy theory. This is part 3B of his seminar number three. Uh, this is independent of all the rest. You don't have to see parts one, two, three, four, or five to understand what's happening on screen here. I will explain the context if I need to, if it comes to it and he references an earlier part in the video or whatever. So let's give this a watch, see what Kent Hovind has to say for himself in part B of seminar three. Okay, let's take up where we left off about dinosaurs in the Bible. Uh, leading up to this in part, like, 3a i guess is what it is in part 3a he was trying to convince us that dinosaurs are actually dragons or dragons are dinosaurs and dinosaurs are mentioned all through the bible and blah, blah. it's just all nonsense complete nonsense people say come on now dinosaurs aren't in the bible well of course the word's not in there they didn't make up the word till 1841 the word computer's not in there either but there really are computers okay uh, what? There really are computers in the Bible? Is that what he was saying? Okay. But yes, dinosaurs are mentioned in the Bible. You say, I didn't see them in there. Well, you need to read carefully, okay? If you get the book of Job, <clears throat> the book of Job has 42 chapters. Just about dead center in the Bible, just before Psalms. You find a very fascinating book. In Job chapter 1, <clears throat> it says, Job was a perfect man. He feared God and hated evil. By the way, that's good advice. Okay? And Job had seven sons and three daughters. And Job had thousands of sheep and camels and oxen and asses. The guy was rich. Really rich. Job was probably written after the flood, but before the law was given in the days of Moses. Uh, no, that's completely inaccurate. The law, the old law, was supposedly written between four and 6,000 years ago. Job was written about 600 years before Jesus appeared. So 600 BCE is when Job was supposed to have been written. I.e., it was written 2,600 years ago, give or take, or 2,700 years, somewhere in there. The old law was written 4,000 years ago, so 1,500-year difference here. That's incorrect from what I understand of the time frames and when the Bible was written and all that stuff. Incorrect, Kent. Before the flood, they lived to be 900. After the flood, they lived to be 400. See, Job lived long enough to have 10 kids all grown out of the house. They all died. He had 10 more kids and saw his great-great-grandchildren from his second family. So you've got to be living a long time to accomplish those things, okay? So those are the reasons why most people think the book of Job was written after the flood during the time when they were still living to be, you know, 400. Anyway. Oh, I see. So n most people don't think that, first of all, Kent. You think that. And your creationist conspiracy theorist buddies think that. But the reason they think that isn't based on any evidence, not based on when it was written, not based on context clues in it to determine when it was written or any of that. It's based on how old they lived to be or how old you think they lived to be. That is a little far-fetched, Ken. One day the messenger came to Job and said, Job, I got some bad news. The oxen and asses were stolen and your servants got killed. And the sheep got burned up. Oh, and by the way, Job, the camels got stolen too. Stock market crash. Get it? Stock? Never mind. Okay. He is cringy. So deeply cringy, I can't stand it. Another, another messenger came and said, Job, your, your kids all died. All ten of your kids are dead. Job's having a bad day. And then Job said, the Lord gave, the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Man, what kind of guy is this anyway? Hey, do you do that when bad things happen to you? Huh. Then Satan gave him boils from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. And a boil is like, like the world's worst zit. And Job was covered in them. And his wife turned against him. You know, a man can handle just about any tragedy in life, but that's the toughest one right there. There's a verse you probably never heard preached on ever. Ephesians chapter 5 talks about, you know, husbands love your wives and wives submit yourself to your husband. You probably heard that part preached on. I bet you never heard this part. Let the wife see that she reverence her husband. 
Treat him like a god. Offer him burnt sacrifices three times. Wow, that's weird. Okay, so Kent is... Kent is arguing that women should literally worship their husbands. Like, treat him like a god, quote-unquote. That's what he just said. That's interesting. Wonder why he's been married four, four times or something. How many times has he been married? He's been married a minimum of three. I know that he... Uh, his first wife was Joe, I think. Her name was Joe. Second wife was Mary Toko, who he actually uses as a source in a previous part of this, as I came to find out recently. Uh, an anti-vax source. MaryToko.com or something. It's crazy. Anyway. Uh, and then he was married to Cindy Lincoln. Now, those are just the three that I know of. I, I know that there have been... Er, I suspect there have been more. There may have been more. I'm not sure. I don't know. But at least three. You think that that's possibly maybe the reason why he's been married at least three times? Because he believes that women should worship their husbands like gods? To use his turn of phrase? Progress only says reverence is respect, not worship. Not in Kent's eyes. In Kent's eyes, it's worship. Literal worship. That's unhinged. That is unhinged stuff, dude. Treat him like a god. Offer him burnt sacrifices three times a day, okay? <laughs> Amen. All right. Chapter 2, verse 10. Er, offer him burnt sacrifices is cook him food. That's what he's... That, that was kind of the joke, but it wasn't really a joke. He really does seem to believe this. And Job said, you speak like one of the foolish women. Can't we receive good at the hand of God and not evil? And then Job's four friends came to visit him. One of those guys was the shortest man mentioned in the Bible. Bildad the Shuhite. That's pretty short, okay? But these four guys came and they talked to Job for 35 chapters. Most of the book of Job is these guys explaining to Job why everything went wrong. They had to be Baptists the way I got it figured. Is he not a Baptist? I I thought that Kent Hovind was a Baptist, but maybe he's just like a non-denominational kind of person or whatever. Job, you must have sinned. I mean, Eliphaz said, whoever perished being innocent. Job, the reason bad things are happening to you is because you sinned. Now, folks, that is the wisdom of the world, okay? That is not true. See, if something bad happens to somebody, you don't know why it happened. You should love them, pray for them, encourage them, and shut up. Don't go to the hospital when they get their gallstones out and say, Hey, brother, these aren't gallstones. These are tithes and offerings. That's interesting. Uh, so I feel like this is kind of a law of attraction way of viewing things a little bit, right? And Kent is kind of dispelling the idea of the law of attraction. You don't know why somebody is suffering. It may not be because they sinned. It may be because, that you know, they, I don't know. They, you just don't know is the bottom line. That's interesting and, and respectable to some degree. I mean, there's nothing else respectable about this guy, but I can appreciate that. I like that. God's getting him out of you one way or another. Don't do that, okay? <laughs> Let God take care of why everything went wrong. He can handle them just fine, all right? That's actually sound advice. Don't blame somebody for their their bad luck. Don't say it's something you did. You made God mad or whatever else. Bad idea. It's a quick way to make atheists. It's a quick way to turn somebody atheist. So Job is sitting there scraping the pus out of the boils by the graves of his ten dead kids thinking, God, would you please answer me? Why did this happen to me? Folks, you don't have to live on this planet very long before you're going to be asking that question. God, why did you do this to me? Now, I don't want to drag skeletons out of anybody's closets, okay? But maybe you've had tragedy in your life. I know a little bit of what I'm talking about. I've got three kids here and three in heaven already, okay? Is that true? Did Kent have six kids and three of them died? Well, if so, I'm sorry to hear that, but it makes sense that he leaned so heavily on religion. You know, people try to find a coping mechanism, and that tends to be it for super religious people.
Yes, tragedy comes to good people trying to do right. It happens, all right? But if something bad happens, what's your response? Job said, I wish the Lord would answer me. See, Job didn't know about Romans 8, 28. God said, we know all things work together for good to them that are the, love God, to them that are the called according to his purpose. Now, this verse does not say everything that happens is good. It doesn't say that. It says it'll work together for good. I'll show you. Has anybody ever been hungry? You ever been hungry before? <clears throat> Suppose you come to my house, you knock on the door, say, hey, Hoven, I'm hungry. I'll say, come on in, man, I'm going to give you a cup of flour. <laughs> that don't sound too good. I got it. How about a spoonful of salt? Now, that'll fill you up. Uh, that ain't going to help. I got it. How about a spoonful of bacon soda? Now, that will wake you up in the morning. Uh -huh. Now, you're probably getting kind of dry by now, so let's pour down a half a cup of Crisco. And chase it down with a cup of buttermilk. You say, Brother Hovind, that would taste terrible. How about if we mix them all together and make biscuits? Did you know the individual ingredients for biscuits taste lousy? Wow, this crowd's getting a little rowdy over here, right? Usually you don't find a rowdy crowd at Kent Hovind's whole thing. But they work together for biscuits. And do you know everything that happens to you might not be good, but it'll work together for good if you love God and you're called according to his purpose. See, the Christian life is so simple. Keep your heart right with God. That's it. Now, that'll be tough to do because the heart is deceitful above all things and <laughs> desperately wicked. But Job is sitting there scraping the pus out of the boil saying, God, would you please answer me? And in chapter 38, <clears throat> the Lord answered Job out of a whirlwind. You know, if a tornado starts talking to me, I'm going to pay attention. <laughs> and the Lord said, Who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? Hey, Job, your four friends did not know what they were talking about. And by the way, be very careful about getting any Bible doctrine from the book of Job, okay? It's true. Why? That's interesting. He's, he's closing off an entire book of the Bible to, like, being interpreted for doctrine? That's weird, right? It's Isn't it scripture? Shouldn't all scripture be inspired of God or whatever else? Shouldn't it all be open for interpretation for doctrine? It's true that the guys said it, but what they said was not true. And cults are always good at picking a verse out here. You better read, better read the whole chapter, okay? Yeah, cults are really good at doing that. That's very true. Cults like Kent Hovind's weird little group of extremists. Now, I believe the Bible is the Word of God, but the Bible contains some lies. It accurately records the lies of men. It's true that they said it, but what they said was not true. Okay, that's the case of these four guys. Anyway, God said, gird up. That's, that's crazy that he says this. I, I'm honestly really surprised that he's saying something like this to a group of people, and they're not, like, hanging him for heresy or whatever. That's really interesting. Four guys. Anyway. God said, Gird up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee, and answer thou me. Where wast thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? I read that 36 years ago as a brand new Christian. And I thought, what a dumb question. God, why would you ask Job where he was when you laid the foundations of the earth? Right. Why would you ask him that? Does he not know everything? He should know exactly where Job was. Or he should at least know the fact that Job wasn't alive yet, supposedly. I said, God, he wasn't there. You know that, and he knows that. So why are you asking such a question? How many of you were here when God built the earth? Was anybody here when God made the earth? Only a couple of Mormons, okay. Yeah. You're in your second existence. I understand, okay. No, you were not here when God built the earth. Now, kids, this is going to be complicated, so listen carefully, okay? Since you were not here when God made the earth, <clears throat> that means that God is older than you are. How many can figure this out with no help at all? Okay. Did it ever occur to you that God is also smarter than you are? Did it ever occur to you that God is stronger than you are? Did it ever occur to you that God is richer than you are? No, because I assume God isn't hoarding U.S. dollars or something. I figure that God doesn't have any money, right? Does he? You say, Brother Hope. Wait, is there money in heaven? God is richer than you are? You say, Brother Hovind, everybody's richer than I are. 
Okay. Well, God certainly is. Hey, try this one. I've said this one a thousand times, and I've never understood it once. But I say it a lot, and I think about it till my brain hurts. Did it ever occur to you that nothing ever occurred to God? He's already thought of everything. He even knows everything you've ever thought about. The Bible says he understands the imaginations of the thoughts. That's a fascinating verse. He not only knows your thoughts, he knows the imaginations of the thoughts. You see, you can not only think about things, you can actually think about what you are thinking about. Yeah, meta thought. Okay, we get it. What's the point here? Think about that. <laughs> the brain is amazing. The Bible says God knows the thoughts of man. And by the way, it says in Luke, he, Jesus knowing their thoughts. That's one of many verses that proves Jesus is God Almighty in the flesh. Wait, which one? Which one was? Which verse is he talking about? Let me just step back, listen again. Oh, it was uh, Jesus knowing their thoughts said unto them. Okay, that's not what the book was saying. If you read the context, which is exactly what he was complaining that people don't do, it was saying, you know what, let's just read the whole thing. Luke eleven seventeen. Let's see what it says and see if he's actually taking this out of context. The Trinity is fake, by the way. It was inserted later by monks. Uh, verses were changed to make it look like the Trinity was real, when in fact the Bible does not support the Trinity. 11.17. Okay, here's 14. Jesus and Beel, uh, Beelzebul. Jesus was driving out a demon that was mute. When the demon left, the men who had been mute spoke, and the crowd was amazed. But some of them said, By Beelzebul, the prince of demons... He is driving out demons. Others tested him by asking for a sign from heaven. Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, Any kingdom divided against itself will be ruined, and a house divided against itself will fall. Uh, so it seems to me what, G what the verse is actually saying isn't that Jesus read their minds. He's taking it too literally. It seems like the verse is saying Jesus knew what they were thinking not read their minds. There is definitely a difference between the two. And that's why Kent Hovind is the first and only person I have ever heard use Luke eleven seventeen as proof of the Trinity. Because every other person out there knows that's complete and total nonsense. Their thoughts. That's one of many verses that proves Jesus is God Almighty in the flesh. God knows your thoughts and he loves you anyway. Wow, praise God for his mercy, right? Job 38, 4. God said, declare, if thou hast understanding, who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest? Question mark. Job doesn't answer. Job's not answering any of God's questions. God said, hast thou entered into the springs of the sea? Did you know scientists didn't even know there were springs in the sea until 1977? Again, this is... Kent taking a verse out of context to support his already existing beliefs. He believes the, the Bible is like fortune telling, that the Bible is divining information or that God is giving us some weird little fun fact about the earth to try to prove that he's real. No, it's nonsense. That's not what's happening in that verse, taking it completely out of context. As usual. Just discovered. Science is very slowly catching up with a few parts of the Bible. God said, where is the way where light dwelleth? Now that is fascinating. I taught physics. Did you know light doesn't stay in a place, it's in a way. It's always moving. But then it says, as for darkness, where is the place thereof? You know the speed of light, 186,282.4 miles per second. You know what the speed of dark is? Zero. Darkness cannot move uh, okay this is like uh this doesn't really make any sense what he's saying here but all right i'm here so far think about it we are the children of light we are supposed to be on the move you know get something done for god interesting we're the children of light huh because i'm pretty sure lucifer means light bringer doesn't it isn't that what lucifer means so are we the children of satan is that what he, is that the idea here Right. When you start interpreting things, names like this, it leads to nonsense. People say, well, it's getting dark. The world's so bad. Well, then turn on your light. Duh. 
That's the reason it's dark is because of you. Right? You're the light to turn it on. Right? The Bible says the gates of hell shall not prevail against you. Hey, gates don't attack you. You attack them. Yeah, let's go, man. Do something for God. Anyway, verse 24. By what way is the light parted which scattereth the east wind upon the earth? Now, wait, wait, wait. Is God telling Job that the light causes the wind? He sure is. And you can ask any weatherman. That's exactly correct. The sun. Wait a minute. What is it? By what way is the light parted which scattereth the east wind? What is this even talking? I don't full. I don't understand. I feel like I'd have to read the entire chapter to even get the context necessary to understand what this verse was talking about. Because Kent is absolutely for sure taking this out of context. But since I don't feel like reading like the verse right now, we're not going to. Let me just try to understand like what he's getting at with this. By what way is the light parted, which scattereth the east wind upon the earth? I just, I don't understand without reading the context behind this. It makes no sense. Kent Hovind is trying to imply that the Bible backs up scientific information. It simply doesn't. It backs up what little scientific information they had at that time and nothing else. And the information that it does back up isn't even reflected in modern day science. Like modern science does not back up a lot of what the Bible says, thus proving the Bible incorrect. And Kent has to selectively pick out a couple of verses that seem to kind of imply out of context that it knew what it was talking about, like that God had it written scientifically accurately. That's just not the case. It just isn't. And that's exactly correct. The sunlight causes the wind patterns. To some degree... The sunlight causes wind patterns, not entirely. The ground heats up, expands the air. We have wind on earth because of the light. Just like God said 4,000 years ago. The Bible is not scientifically accurate much as you would love it to be, Kent. It just isn't. And that's why Kent is even on here in the first place, arguing that young earth creationism is correct. Because he wants to prove the Bible is more trustworthy than science. Why is he selectively picking out verses that, out of context, kind of sound like maybe they're alluding to some scientific ideas that are scientifically accepted nowadays? It just makes no sense. God said, canst thou send lightnings? Boy, it's a good thing I can't. How many of you can think of somebody that's lucky to be alive because you cannot send the lightnings? I can think of several. Yes, I can. <laughs> God said, Canst thou send lightnings that they may go and say unto thee, Here we are. Now, wait, wait, wait. Is God telling Job that electricity can be used to send a message? No. No, that's not what he was saying. They didn't know what electricity was back then. Can you send lightning that they may go and say unto thee, Here we are? No, that's not what it was saying at all, in any way. This is what Kent's doing. He's twisting the Bible out of proportion, twisting the context, or removing the context completely, stripping it. After specifically saying cults love to remove context, he then spends the next five to ten minutes doing exactly that. Fascinating. It can be used to send a message, like radio, cell phone, microwave, TV. Electricity sends a message two different ways, through the electricity through the wire and also through the electromagnetic force, the radio waves coming off of it. God told Job that 4,000 years ago. Marco no, he didn't. That's not what that verse was saying at all. Years ago, Marconi and them guys had discovered it in the last few hundred years. God asked Job 84 questions. Job never answered one. These are the kind of questions that don't need an answer. The question was designed... <coughs> to change the person's attitude. These are the same kind of questions you dads have to ask your kids. See, I've got three kids, one of each. I know what I'm talking about. Kids get to a certain age, and they get kind of cocky, and they think, you know, they should make the rules around the house. The kid comes in one day and says, hey, dad, listen. I believe I should be allowed to stay out till four in the morning with my friends. After all, I'm 10 now. <laughs> and dad says, hold on just a minute, kid. 
You'd like to know why you can't stay out till 4 in the morning. Well, son, let me ask you a couple of questions. Uh, who pays the electric bill around this house? Huh? Who's paying for the house? Who paid for them clothes you're wearing, son? Who paid for that bed you slept on last night? Who pays for the food you eat and eat and eat and eat and eat and eat? Yeah, shame on them for eating, right? What a piece of garbage to eat food. Who paid for that hot water and soap you took a shower with? About a month. You know, I would honestly never, never say something like this. You're making the person feel guilty for being alive. Like, it's my responsibility to ensure that my kid is capable of eating or can turn a light on. That's my responsibility. And I love my kid, and I do it gladly, not begrudgingly. I'm not upset that they're eating too much food, or not upset that they're using too much electricity or whatever else. If it becomes a problem where we have to be really, really careful because they're super short on money, that'd be a different situation. I'm not begrudging them for using too much food or water or electricity or whatever else. And Kent Hovind is not poor, at least at this time he was not poor by any stretch in the imagination. He was a millionaire by this point, especially because he wasn't paying taxes. So it wasn't about having to be careful so they didn't run out of money in this case. It was about him holding it over their heads. And that is just the most ass-backwardest way to look at things, if I have ever seen it. Just sad, man. Just sad. Month ago. <laughs> Let's just get it straight, son. The Bible is very clear. He who payeth the bills maketh the rules. Second Opinions, chapter 4. You see, son, <laughs> me, dad, you, kid. And if you're going to sleep under my roof and eat my food, you're going to do it my way. And if you want to do it your way, well, then go get your own roof to sleep under and do it your way. See, that's the golden rule, son. He that hath the gold maketh the rules. Who do you think you are, kid? Where were you when we brought this property and cleared this land and drove off the grizzly bears and marched uphill to school 40 miles in the snow, barefoot, both ways? <laughs> oh, my God, this joke is so tired, please. This is like that joke that homophobes are constantly telling about the LGBTQIAJFX. PLC community like how old is that joke going to get before people stop telling it it's not funny it wasn't funny the first time it was told and it's not funny now it will never be funny stop telling that stupid fucking joke please it's the exact same thing with this it wasn't funny then it's not funny now Kent barefoot both ways People aren't even laughing in the crowd because it's been told so many fucking times. How many got the same speech when you were growing up? You know, okay, good, good. Let's get it straight, son. Me, dad, you, kid. I think that's what God's doing to Job. God asked Job 84 questions. Job never answered one. But Job got an attitude adjustment. See, Job had the same problem that most of us have. He did not have a good appreciation for who God was. Come to chapter 40. God said, Behold now, behemoth. Well, what on earth is a behemoth? It's a mythical creature. The Bible also mentions unicorns, but we know for a fact those aren't real either. But if you missed the first part of this, Kent Hovind actually does believe dinosaurs were literally real and living, among, uh, living alongside humans in the Bible. Really. He really believes this. Well, whatever it was, Job could behold it. Because God never tells you to do something you can't do. See, God would not say, behold now, behemoth, if he could not behold now, behemoth. Well, he could be saying, think about this creature. He could, instead of doing what Kent is implying, which is to say, physically look at behemoth, he could be saying, think about this. Imagine this for a second. But again, Kent is the master of taking things out of context. It's like his favorite thing to do. That's deep theology, I know, okay, but think it through, all right? Now, some reference Bibles say behemoth is probably the elephant or hippopotamus. Oh, that is ludicrous. 
Why is that so ludicrous, Kent? I believe Behemoth is the long-necked dinosaur. Now, there are 13 different long-necked dinosaurs, okay? So there's the Brachiosaur, the Apatosaur, the Cetosaur. He's got the big seat, okay? There's the Blondosaur. <laughs> Blondosaurus, very rare. Talk slowly, please. Wow, that, that was nice of Kent. Make a joke about... Uh, make a dumb blonde joke. Awesome. I have to talk to her kind of slow, okay? Uh, I, say, I think Behemoth is the Apat Brachiosaurus. It says he eats grasses and ox. Some people say, hey, my Bible says elephant, and elephants eat grass. Well, duh, bunny rabbits eat grass too, okay? A lot of animals eat grass, right? Look at the next verse. His strength is in his loins, his force is in the navel of his belly. The biggest part on him is his belly. And they say, well, elephants have a big belly. Yes, I know. Hippopotamus have a big belly. Brachiosaurus had a big belly. Okay, so far you've given us absolutely no reason to think that it's not an elephant or a hippopotamus and no reason to believe that it is a Brachiosaurus. He has a big belly. <laughs> so does he. <laughs> that is just six. Shock humor, okay, great. This is the exact kind of thing I expect from Kent. Sick. Who would, who would pose for that? Anyway, it says, he moveth his tail like a cedar. Now hold on a minute. His tail is like a cedar tree. Have you ever seen an elephant's tail? I mean, would that remind you of a cedar tree? Interestingly enough, I, I actually know a little bit about this. The word that was used in the Bible to describe the cedar tree, it says it has a tail like a cedar tree. The word used to describe the, the whole cedar tree thing, what it's actually referencing is the way that it moves. When a cedar tree is in the wind, it like sways back and forth. That's what the word and the verbiage was referring to in the Bible, was the way that the tail moves. And interestingly enough, an elephant's tail does kind of whip back and forth in a similar way. So you're not convincing me with your misinterpretation of the words, once again, Kent. Or a hippo tail, not like a cedar tree. It is like a cedar tree in the way that it whips back and forth, actually. Now, Brachiosaurus tail, yeah, that's a little more like a cedar tree than the rest of them, okay? You know, before they put those footnotes at the bottom of the Bible, I think they should be required to read the passage at least once and then comment on it, okay? By the way, you preachers, if you're going to preach on a passage, at least read it once before you preach on it, okay? Yeah, all right. Anyway, next verse says, His bones are as strong pieces of brass. His bones are like bars of iron. He has big, heavy-duty bones, and they did. This is a real dinosaur toe bone I've got in my museum in Pensacola. One of the knuckle bones from a Brachiosaurus. Now this will be kind of complicated, so listen carefully. The reason he had such big toe bones is because he had big toes. How many can figure that out with no help? Four, five, six, okay. And the reason he had those big toes is because he had a big foot. There's a kid taking a bath in a Brachiosaur footprint. Pictures. On uh, he's actually showed this picture before. I don't remember if this... Uh, I looked it up, and I don't remember if this was a real picture of a kid taking a bath in a dinosaur footprint or not. I, I'm i leaning no, but again, I, I would have to look it up again just to be super sure. So just be very skeptical of anything he shows in any of his stuff, basically. On the book right here on the steps. And the reason he had that big foot is because he had a big leg to hold up. His front leg is 20 feet tall. The biggest dinosaur found so far is 60 feet to the top of the head. Found in Oklahoma. They say it's going to... Um, I've said this a billion times. If you haven't seen any of the other parts, I'll say it again. Do not believe anything, including the most mundane facts that he gives you, because he twists the facts, even the most basic stuff that's easy to look up. He lies about it and twists it around and makes it into something else. There was one part. Take him twenty. There was one part where Kent Hovind was saying that the flood took place forty three hundred years ago, and it's incredible to know that the bristlecone pine, the oldest tree on planet Earth, is forty three hundred years old. Only it's not. The bristlecone pine is over five thousand years old. It does not match up with his ideology. But he, he doesn't care. He just lies about it. Just makes it up. Whole cloth. 
even the most mundane facts, he uses to his advantage and twists around and lies about. Don't believe anything, even if it's as basic as the tallest dinosaur was like 60 feet tall or whatever. It seems mundane. Don't believe it without evidence. To the top of the head, found in Oklahoma. They say it's going to take them 20 years to dig all the bones out of the ground because it is a government project. Oh, yeah, and he hates the government, too. I don't know if you guys know the history of this guy, but he refused to pay taxes. He hadn't paid taxes in 30 years, his entire life, basically. And uh, he got reported to the IRS for it. it. It turned out he owed, like, $3 million or something after, like, fines and everything else. And he renounced citizenship and everything to try to avoid paying taxes. You know, there's this whole movement called the Sovereign Citizenship, uh, the Sovereign Citizen Movement, and they have a bunch of like pseudo legal strategies to get out of paying taxes. None of them are actually legal for the most part. Like nothing that these sovereign citizens claim is actually true or legal. Well, he tried every one of the strategies that they laid out, the Sovereign Citizen Movement laid out to try to get out of paying taxes, and it failed. Every one of them, including but not limited to renouncing citizenship, of course. Uh, so needless to say, he absolutely hates the government. Hates it. They say when it was alive, it probably weighed 100 tons. Now, 100 tons is equal to 14 school buses put together. That means if he was to come by and step on you, you would be deeply impressed by him. You would be road pizza. Mm -hmm. By the way, speaking of government projects, <clears throat> i got to share with you my new invention that's going to make me the richest man on planet Earth. I'm going to save so much money for the highway department, construction crews, utility companies, and the military. Oh, and all I want is 10% of the savings, and I'll be the richest man on planet Earth. I have invented a shovel that will stand up by itself. <laughs> you won't need to pay those guys to lean on it anymore. Mm, I more government is lazy and stealing your money garbage. Unfortunately, we need the government. Like, I feel like Kent deeply, deeply underestimates how helpful and useful the government is. I'm happy to pay taxes, honestly. I, I'm glad to. I'm first in line every year to do it because I understand what the government does for the people. I wish it would do more. If it would do more, I'd be even happier paying taxes, you know, raise the minimum wage, expand social spending programs, all that stuff. I'd be glad to, to pay a little bit more for that. You know, I, I had a terminal illness. I don't talk about this very much. I had a terminal illness a long time ago, like years ago. Uh, very low chance of coming out of it alive there's a 40 percent chance of survival for me and there was an experimental treatment that raised the chances to 70 or 80 percent it was an experimental medicine that was just out of trials i think and i took this medicine and survived got better cured me completely surprisingly uh, incredibly honestly and i mean it it really fucked me up in a lot of ways. I'm still to this day itchy. Like, it caused me to itch terribly. I couldn't sleep. I, I literally lost my hair. I lost my hair from the treatments that I had. Um, but I'm alive. I made it through. And the government spent $115,000 on me to get, like, because I had Medicaid at the time. Because I was so fucking broke. I spent a hundred or they spent one hundred and fifteen thousand dollars on me getting that treatment. I am more than happy to pay my taxes every year. More than happy. The government saved my life. I am happy to pay that back to the government to make sure that they can save someone else's life too. So Kent over here, on the other hand, is obsessed with talking shit about the government, talking about how evil they are and how useless and how stupid and how he doesn't want to pay taxes and all this other garbage. Like, just give it up, man. 
Give it up. Do you have any idea how much the government does for you? Like things that you don't even realize they do. The roads the br- that you drive on, the bridges, the education that you received, that your kids received, is all thanks to the fact that we're a civilized society that's come together and pay taxes together. That's what it's all about. That's how it happened. Just pay your fucking taxes, Ken. Come on. Yes, taxes can be a burden, a deep burden sometimes. They have historically been really hard for me. Uh, I'm still willing to pay taxes. Because, like I said, the government saved my life. I'm willing to try to save someone else's life by paying into it. Thank you, I know. (laughs) Next verse says, he's the chief of the ways of God. He's the chief. That's the Hebrew word, resheth, which means he's the chief, he's the principal, he's the biggest animal God ever made. Well, that would not be the elephant or hippopotamus. It would be the brachiosaurus. And that kind of fits the pattern for the way the devil works, you know. Whenever God makes things, the devil tries to destroy them. God makes beautiful things, and Satan always tries to destroy them. Hey, question. How big... Get my shit f***ed over here by this guardian. I'll get it. I'm not, I'm not in terrible shape yet. I still have some stuff here. I, it's just guardians are really hard to take on when there are other creatures around f***ing you up. So I had to take out the other creatures. Now I can take this guardian on. See? It's really not that hard once you finally get a break from the other guys. I mean, hitting that exactly right, that parry where the beam shoots back at him, that's actually pretty difficult. Uh, Getting it exactly right. It's very, very hard. And when there are other creatures around that are like, harassing you and causing you problems no chance of it no chance um this is a notoriously hard part of the game like they tried to make it very difficult to do this so anyway well i'm glad that you made it out okay the world would be terrible without you oh and you do great service in the world love you buddy well appreciate that thank you so much yeah i'm glad i made it out too because that would have sucked for sure like i said i lost my hair I remember taking the medicine, and within just a couple of days, I was taking a shower. Handfuls of hair were coming out. Handfuls of it. Just, It was so f***ing scary. You have no idea. And at that point, I didn't know if the medicine was going to work or not. There was a chance that I was going to go back in like two weeks, bald, to find out that the medicine was just not going to work, period. I was, ju- was going to die. That was it. Really scary stuff, honestly. Really, really scary stuff. But yeah, I made it I made it out. And that's why I'm glad to pay taxes. That's why I do it with a smile on my face, waiting in line, first in line every every year to pay those taxes because there are people out there in my exact situation who had to deal with the exact same thing and I wanna make sure they, they don't have to worry about whether or not Medicaid is going to save their life, you know. Sadly, after I got treatment, Medicaid locked down their rules about all of this and refused to cover treatment for this anymore. So actually, there are people out there who need the treatment and can't get it. 